I guess first and foremost, how many of us are using Google AdWords currently? How many of us are familiar, how many of us don't know what Google AdWords is? So just about everybody is familiar with it. Okay, how many of us search on Google every day? All the time, okay, perfect. That, we're, we're gonna be fine. So I'm here to talk to you about the Google Grants program, which is basically, it's, it's open to all nonprofit organizations. The wonderful thing about it is that it's essentially, well not essentially, it is free money granted to you by Google for the purpose of running paid search campaigns on Google.com, okay? So I'll tell you a little bit about why I'm here. Uh, I come from a company called Cardinal Path. We are located both here in Vancouver as well as, well across Canada and the United States. We have offices in Phoenix, in Chicago, as well as uh, in Ottawa as well. We have a, a number of different folks satellite around, around the country and, and Canada as well. And we are essentially a web analytics consultancy firm. We do all of the things that you can see up here. We're certified across all of these different products. You can see that we're very, uh, we're very in-depth in terms of working with Google across analytics and AdWords and products like this. And we also, a very large part of our business is, is directed towards uh, our training piece. And so I spend a good amount of time, I'd say, I, I don't know, 15 to 20 dates a year going around the country, uh, going around both countries, excuse me, I'm used to being both in here and the, uh, in the US as well, and talking about all things AdWords. And so if there's any questions, I will have my email address up at the end of this. Please, by all means, just send me an email if there's anything that's unclear. My goal today is, you know, we have different levels of familiarity with Google AdWords, so I don't want to underwhelm anyone, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. So we're going to go through all of the different ways. I feel it's probably important at, at a particular level to utilize and maximize the Google AdWords uh, grant money, okay? Because it's free money and we want to use that. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... This is just what I wanted to cover. We're going to talk about the program. We're going to breeze through that. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody knows where to go to be able to sign up for the program itself. We're going to talk about simple ways to start maximizing results. We can talk about things like expanding AdWords accounts, uh, how the actual ad auction works and why that's important. And then things like keyword research, quality score. And then we have, uh, we have a friend here with us today who comes from a company called Foundation Search, and so I want to point out some of the work that they are doing to make it very easy for all of us to find, uh, to find donation money, basically, grant money. So if that sounds good to everybody, we'll get started. Uh, I guess one thing I don't want to gloss over is that you might be wondering why is an agency coming in and talking to us uh, as a group of nonprofits? We do a lot of work with nonprofit organizations, and so we really like to spread word about especially the, the Google products that are free. So we want to make sure that these are, that, that everybody's familiar with these, that, that we kind of unravel any of the myths associated with working with them and get any questions answered. Because again, it's a very great way to take advantage of a lot of cash that Google has on store. So don't feel guilty about that at all. Okay, so we'll get started. Let's just talk about the program itself. I made it look very simple up here. And, and I promise you it is. There's a few key factors to think about. Uh, it is a very easy, and it's very easy to apply for. You can simply Google, Google Grants, and that'll take you to the Google for Nonprofits page, where it's very simple to sign up. And I'll talk about some of the eligibility criteria. What I have up here, I, I say, you're gonna need to spend up to $330 a day. So that equates to about $10,000 a month in free money. Okay. I don't know if, how everybody's marketing budgets are, but that, that's a great chunk of money to be able to, to access. There's great opportunities for expansion here and being able to reach out to, to potential folks that want to donate to our organization. And the best part about it is all managed via AdWords. So for those of us that are already using that platform or that tool, this makes it very easy to use as well. There are limitations, so just because it's free doesn't mean we, we have all of the functionality that we're used to working with a tool like AdWords. So here's, these are the main limitations as I see them. You can't bid any higher than $2, okay? And we'll talk about what that means to bid on keywords for those of us that are not familiar. You can only show ads for those searching through 
google.com or google.ca, any of the main search properties of Google, okay? My nice little graphic here is to indicate that you can only manually bid on keywords. Uh, and then be aware that if you fall out of line of Google's policy for using this service, they will reprimand, they, they do run the risk of having your, your uh, actual grant account removed. And then uh, here what I want to talk about is just the fact that that money that Google is granting to you is on a per day level. So if you don't spend all of that money each day, you don't have the opportunity to get it back. Does that make sense, everybody? Basically, my whole goal here today is to talk about how we can most take advantage of everything that's available, which means we bid as high as we can, $2.00 spending as much as we can per day, which is $330, in order to make sure we maximize that available budget. All right. So let's talk about what an organization must do to qualify for this. First of all, you have to be reg registered as a Canada Income Tax Act, under the Canada Income Tax Act. If you're a US organization, I think the filing is 5013C, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But essentially, a tax exempt uh, nonprofit organization. Are, are we all tax exempt nonprofit organizations here? I don't know if that was a requirement to be part of Net Tuesday, Eli. No, no, we bring <laughs> all sorts of people in here because even if they are actually eligible for the program, there's still, I think, lots to be learned here today. Great, okay. The other thing we have to do is we have to make sure that our ad, this sounds simple enough, but our ads have to point to our organization's website. And it sounds sounds kind of silly if you think about it, but Google's going to keep track of where you're pointing traffic. You can't kind of bait and switch, create a whole bunch of ads using free money and send them to other potential sites, okay? So if you have like a specific campaign site, no go. It's got to be your central site. Yes. It has to fall under your domain, and that's a really good point because that's another limitation of the program. Anything that you send traffic to has to fall under your specific domain. Uh, you have to run mission-based ads. So here's kind of my right and wrong way to do this. You can see the ad on the top. Unique gifts for all, children's books, t-shirts, shop online, save time and money. We can't do that. We, we have to make sure that our ads are, are definitely dedicated to the purpose of our organization. So here, you know, Shop and Fight AIDS. Uh, Red Ribbon Collection has unique gifts for a great cause. We have to make sure that we are consistent with the purpose of our organization, okay? Google will not manage our campaigns for us. Just because we, we qualify for the program, Google expects us as, as an organization to be able to run all of our, our campaign management ourselves. Simple fact, but you know, in case anybody's thinking that, that uh, we'll be able to sign up for the program and then have Google go ahead and set things up for us, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. And then let's talk about who's ineligible. So governmental entities, organizations, uh, hospitals and healthcare, Schools, child care centers, and political parties and organizations are all actually ineligible for this program. So, and again, anybody that's taking notes or anything like this, I, I will make sure that Eli has a, a version of this to send off to anyone. I don't want you to, to feel like you have to capture um, too much here, but, and again, if there's questions, let me know afterwards, but you, you'll all get a copy of this, so don't worry about that. Are there any questions so far about eligibility or, or what the program entails? No? All good so far? How many of us are already using this again? Show of hands? A few of us? Okay. Okay, well let's talk, let's start to talk about how we can maximize results. The idea here is again, Google gives us money every day. If we don't use the money they give us each and every day, it goes away. So there's no, here's $10,000 a month, use it as you see fit. It is, here is $330 today. If you don't use it, it's gone. You're going to have to start over the next day. So we start with really simple levers and really simple mechanics to try and maximize that, okay? Bid management is extremely important. Ad scheduling and improving CTR, which is click-through rate. Anyone, is everybody familiar with click-through rate? Anyone not familiar with what that means? Okay, no problem. We're going to talk about click-through rate in just a second here. We'll start with bid management first. Remember how we talked, how one of the key limitations of AdWords 
under this program is that uh, you can only bid manually. What that means is everybody, every time somebody searches on a keyword on Google, as an advertiser, I have the option to basically say, I'm willing to pay $2 for my ad to show if somebody clicks on my ad. Well, Google has all sorts of ways that they make this easy for advertisers to do. But as nonprofits, we have a very limited way of doing this. We have to do this all manually. So in order to effectively do this, what we want to do is we want to make sure, essentially, that we're maximizing our bids all the time, making sure that our ad is present on the Google results page all the time, because we want to drive as many clicks to our organization's page as possible, okay? And I've got here some of the things that we want, that we might want to drive people to do, you know, donations, signing up for newsletters, uh, signing up for petitions. Does anybody have any other examples of what they drive folks to their site to do as an action? Download PDFs. Download PDFs, absolutely. Volunteer. Volunteer, so signing up for volunteer time or just finding out more information about it. Perfect. Anything else? Okay. Those are all key, right? And so, what this boils down to, it's pretty easy when it comes to Google Grants. You, we could kind of stop the point right here and say, bid $2 on everything, because you want to make sure that it, within Google, it's a very competitive marketplace. There's so many advertisers bidding on keywords all the time. You want to make sure that you're bidding as aggressively as possible. Well, we can only bid $2, right? So we have to make sure that we are driving as many, uh, as many impressions or views of our ad as we can. So what I'd suggest, again, use that maximum bid of $2 all the time if you can. Uh, once you actually reach your daily budget, so remember you can spend up to $330 a day, go ahead and start splitting out your campaigns, okay? Start to drive traffic to multiple different campaigns or multiple different ad campaigns within your account. And then what you'll find is that you're going to have a number of different keywords that drive people to your organization site. You're going to be bidding on things like donate now or uh, you know, volunteer now for this particular um, this event and things like that. And you're going to have campaigns that perform better or worse than others. Drive all of your budget to those campaigns that are working very well, okay? Because again, we have a limited number of, of dollars that we can maximize here, so we want to make sure that we're using uh, the most effective campaigns that we can, all right? So I would essentially make sure I'm driving all my traffic to those kind of really well-performing campaigns, okay? The other thing that we can do, because because manual bidding is the only way that we can bid on these keywords, for those of us that have worked in AdWords, you have to physically log on to, you know, in your browser, you're physically going into this site, and you're moving around and, and clicking on a particular keyword and adjusting it from $1.50 to $2. And it can become very tedious, especially if we have a lot of different keywords that we're bidding on. There is a tool that Google gives us. There are so many tools that Google gives us, one of which is called the Google AdWords Editor. It is a, it's a product that you download. It's essentially just a, uh, if, how many of us use iTunes? You use iTunes every day? If you use iTunes, I guarantee this tool is not very difficult to use. And basically what that will allow us to do is we can go into that tool and we can manually adjust all of our bids at once. And you can move and change budgets from places that are, are working well to those that are not. Okay? I know I don't have a, a, a demo of this right now. I'm happy to talk more about this product after. I'm happy to, to walk through it after we talk here. If you go, I have the, a URL up here. Whoops, excuse me. So I would go ahead and, you know, you can download it from this particular site. You can just Google AdWords Editor. That'll take you to the same download spot. Any questions so far? Yes. Me well, what you can do is, what I would use WordStream for might be 
keyword discovery, so looking for a whole number of different keywords you might not have thought of. And then I would just simply place those into the tool and, and adjust from there. Okay, so the tool, and again, I, I'm not showing it here, but this is kind of what it looks like. It's trying to make it look like iTunes for you. And the beauty of it is that all, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of software that sits on your machine. You can make bulk edits to all of your account campaigns. Uh, you can copy and paste things. How many of us offer, or how many of, how many of us does our organization affect uh, all sorts of different regions across Canada and the U.S., right? So probably different cities. We might have different campaigns targeted to different folks in different places. This is a really great way to say, I'm targeting folks in Vancouver. Well, I want to go ahead and replicate that and target folks in Ottawa or Toronto or, or whatnot, okay? And this is a really great way to take something that's already working and go ahead and, and, and uh, aggregate that out. So that's, again, a great use of this tool. The next piece to talk about is that of ad scheduling. And ad scheduling is simply, well, it's right here, adjusting the time of the day and day of the week that your ads show, okay? So if you think about, well, here's an example. This is me on Sunday at 3.45 a.m. Actually, this might be me on Sunday at 3.45 p.m. And then here's a Tuesday at 12.30. Is it pretty safe to say that people are searching on Google at different times of the day, different days of the week, in different patterns, right? So you might, you might be trying to attract folks at very high traffic times, like a Tuesday at lunchtime. And there might not be as many people searching for you on a Sunday in the wee hours of the morning, okay? The whole reason behind bringing this up is that we don't want to necessarily show our ad to folks at different times of the day because the traffic might not be as valuable to you, all right? And what I mean is, what we can do is what Google allows us to do is make automated bid adjustments. And what this means is we will improve the actual visibility of our ad on Google's homepage based on what time of the day somebody searches for you. And what that means is, everybody's familiar with searching on Google, and do we all know that our ads show at the very top of the screen or down across the right side? That's where all the advertisements go. Where do you think the best place for our ad is to be placed? Most people say top of the page, I, I'd agree. And that's because when you first go to your results page, you go and you look at the very top thing first. So that's probably the most valuable real estate on the page. And what we want to do is we want to make sure, so at Sunday, 3.45 in the morning, we actually decrease our bid so our ad shows far down the page or not at all. Because we're not that interested in somebody searching at, at 4 in the morning. Maybe we are. I don't want to discredit that. And then on Tuesday, at high traffic time, we want to make sure that we increase our bid, make it much more likely to show to folks that are searching at that time. Does that make sense? Yes? So, doing the different times, um, when I was on setting up our Google as a brand, um, I didn't notice You didn't miss it. Well, it's okay if you missed it. Uh, it's all in the campaign settings. So the question is, how do I do this, right? And again, I, we, I don't have time for a full demo, but I'm happy to, to show where this lives inside the, the interface. Essentially, it's at a when you create a new ad campaign and you go to the settings for that campaign, you can adjust the, the time at which that campaign shows from there. Okay, the other question is, how am I gonna know when I wanna show my ad? How do I know what the most important time of the day is, right? Maybe my 3.45 and 12.30 example isn't that applicable to all of us. Well, there are reports you can pull within AdWords to show what's the best or most 
advantageous time to show your advertisements. And from there, uh, this is the question you're asking. You can pull a screen like this, which will essentially let me adjust what times of the day I show, and I can increase or decrease my bid based on that time of day. And that lives here. So I would go into my campaign, I go into those settings, I go into schedule. There's gonna be a quiz after this, so please remove all these. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna go into add schedule. Okay. And again, all this will be in the in the slides. Please don't 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 scramble. I don't want to scare anybody. The next piece we're going to talk about is improving click through rate. So, for those of us that don't know what click through rate is, every time your ad shows on Google.com, that's called an impression. And every time somebody clicks on it, that's called a click, quite simply. And the click through rate is simply the ratio of how many people clicked on that ad against how many times it was served. So if you can imagine, a good click through rate indicates to me that people are interested in my ad or my product or whatever it is that I'm, that I'm advertising for. So we want to push this because you know, for us, with a grants account, this is a very important. Uh, click through rate is a great way to actually drive down your, your cost. And I know this is free money, but by driving down our costs, even though it's free, it gives us more opportunity to show our ads to more potential uh, donators or subscribers or things like that. And I think I'm getting ahead of myself. That's exactly what I was going to, to indicate here. There's this thing called quality score. And again, I could spend a whole day on that. I won't. Google has something called the quality score. And what it is, it's, it's essentially a metric that they use to reward advertisers for doing things very well, for, uh, for offering, for basically bidding on appropriate keywords, giving you a very relevant advertisement, and driving someone to a, a, an actual web page that is very related to what they do. So, when we make improvements in click through rate, we improve our quality score, which actually drives down our costs. So the whole idea here, one of the, the whole thing from today is that basically by maximizing our click volume, by maximizing uh, that available money to us within this Google Grants account, I think we'll be doing very well. Okay? All right. Everybody good so far? Am I overwhelming anybody? Am I underwhelming anybody? Good. So how do I make improvements to click through rate? Right? Well, it's all about making my advertisement more attractive because I want someone to see it and I want them to click on it. Because the more people click on it, the, the, the better my click through rate, the more money I save that I can use towards other ad campaigns through Google Grants. So I'll do things like I'll split test ads. This means I'll have two ads running at once and I'll see which one performs better. And by better, I mean which one's being clicked on more, which one is driving more signups, which one is driving more donation money, and then I'll make sure that that's the ad that I run most of the time. I'll do things like adjust match types. For those of us that are not familiar with AdWords, there's a lot of talk we can do on match types themselves. But this is essentially the way that Google matches Whatever the keyword was, or whatever somebody searched in Google, they match to your actual ad campaign. And then there's something called negative keywords, right? and all this means is that negative keywords uh, basically tell Google, if somebody searches, so here's an example. Somebody's looking to go to Paris, and they're looking to stay at the Hilton Hotel. So they type in Hilton Paris. But all of a sudden they start seeing search results for Paris Hilton, right? So that's, that's an issue because, A, that's not relevant, right? I'm not searching for Paris Hilton, maybe I am, but I'm not in this situation. So I wanna make sure that my ad doesn't show up when somebody's searching on Paris Hilton, because there's a whole lot of things that can show up there. So what I would do is I'd make sure that I'd use a negative keyword, not negative against Paris Hilton, but negative keyword to make sure that I don't match for that type of a search query. Okay. 
With ad split testing, here I'm just going to make this show. This is what I'm talking about. We're running two versions of an ad. We want to figure out which one's performing better. We want to pause whichever is not performing well. And then we want to go ahead, uh, create a new ad, and constantly be revolving these ads, okay? We always want to show what performs really well. Again, because that improves our click-through rate and it drives down our costs. I'm going to say that another 50 times before we're done. So I have just one question on that sure. click-through rate. So my understanding was click-through rate was especially important to us as nonprofits who are bound by a limit on the maximum bid because that quality score is how we determine how high up toward the top of the list of ads we actually are displayed on. So if you want to be the top ad, if you get the high quality score, you, even if someone paid more for their ad, you could still beat them to the top. We don't work together. He's, he, he's exactly on the nose and he knows exactly what slides I'm going to show in a little while. But no, that's perfect. It, that's exactly the point. High quality score means that we can show higher in the rankings without paying as high of a bid price. In our situation, that's extremely important, just like you said, Eli, because we can only bid $2. Everybody else that isn't a nonprofit can bid $10, 15 20 30 $40, whatever they want, and they can show higher in the search results. But we are limited to that, so we have to take advantage of click-through rate and therefore quality score. Really good point. Really good point. We'll, uh, we'll adjust match types. So again, we want to make sure that we are very fine-tuned on what somebody's searching for. So for instance, again, with somebody searching for Hilton Hotel in Paris, uh, maybe there's a very specific location within Paris that they're looking for. Maybe we don't want to open up the actual matching to a whole host of different unrelated terms. So we use things like exact matches. And essentially what these do is these drive the exact search that somebody is, is looking for rather than opening up the, the doors to all sorts of other potential results. And then using negative keywords, there's a great report within AdWords, uh, it's kind of called the search terms report. We, we always used to call it the search query report. This will show you exactly what people searched on to see your ad. So you can see all the different variations that they might have used to find you. And again, if anyone's curious as to where to find that after this, I'm happy to point them towards that. Okay, and we talked a bit about using uh, negative keywords as well. So in terms of ex account expansion, these are just some best practices. We want to make sure that we can reach as many folks as possible. If we think about us as nonprofits, we can only bid $2. There's a lot of competitive keywords in, within the Google landscape. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of keyword variations that people bid upon. Okay? If you can think about it, there's just so many different ways people might find our particular advertisement. So we want to make sure that we highlight, well, what are all the different ways I can figure out new methods for someone to find me? And here's, here's a few of them. Uh, we can use kind of somewhat unconventional means that we might not use as a, as a for-profit company. And we're going to talk about all of these, keyword expansion, autocomplete, organic keywords, uh, our search query report, and so on. So let me jump into this very quickly. The first of which is keyword expansion. Probably the, well, I might say the best tool within AdWords is called the Keyword Tool. All of us are familiar with searching on Google. All of us are probably already at home with using this tool, even if we haven't before. All you have to do, if you're in the AdWords interface, go to Tools and Analysis, go down to the actual Keyword Tool button, and it brings up something we're very familiar with. You can't see my graphic that well, but it's just a search bar. And if you type in a particular keyword, like, uh, disaster, hurricane relief. Google's going to return to you all the different variations, how many search queries were performed on those different variations, and what the average cost for those actual keywords might be if you wanted to use those in your campaign. Okay? It's a really great way to find all of the different variations for people to find your organization. 
How many of us use Bing.com? I, I actually I worked for Microsoft for five years, so I I did use it in the past. I still use it from time to time. Bing actually has a really great tool. It's an Excel for those of us that like Microsoft Excel. There is a plugin. It's called the Bing Ads Intelligence Tool. It's very similar in that what it does is it allows you to find all of the keyword variations and related terms that people might look for to find your organization. So what I suggest doing is, depending on what your organization does, let's say, let's say again that you're looking for uh, hurricane relief, I would use that to start finding different variations of hurricane relief in different regions and different parts of the US and Canada and whatnot. And then I go ahead and start expanding that list using these tools. Okay, and you're gonna quickly start creating a really large list of all the different types of searches people might perform to find you. There's so many tools, your head's gonna spin. Please note, you've got these, you're gonna have these slides. Google has something called the contextual targeting tool. This is another way, again, Google is all about making relationships between what people look for and what should show as a result of that. That's kind of their whole business, right? So this is another tool that you can use uh, to find, again, build those relationships between hurricane relief or uh, what I have here, Feed Africa Charity, and you'll be returned with a whole host of different terms that might be related to that topic. So I'd use those again. This is a way to figure out what people are using to find your organization. Search query report. Again, I can show anybody that's looking for this particular report. This will show you what people did to find your ad. What did they search for? Did they search for hurricane relief? Did they search for hurricane relief Florida? Did they search for hurricane relief insurance? All sorts of things. You can find out the actual terms people used. How many of us like Google autocomplete? Start typing something and then it shows up. It might sound a little silly, but that's another great way to figure out what folks are using or what are some of the related terms that you might want to use. What are top searches? Again, that'll work really well if you're not logged into your Google account, because that's going to be pulling up searches from all over the place. But again, another potential way to find, uh, to find potential searches. How many of us use Google Analytics? I know one person that does. Yeah. Yeah? Everybody familiar with the ability to look for what are the organic queries that drove people to your site? Another great way to figure out Oh, these are all of the ways people are finding me. I want to go ahead and include those in my Google Grants account. So I would go here, I'd look at your organic search keywords within analytics. I would also uh, use the site search report. So again, within Google Analytics, if you have site search enabled on your organization's web page, look at all the search terms people are, are searching for there. What are all the different ways that people are looking for more information within your organization? Those might be good terms to use as well. And then finally, here's, here's a, a graphic to talk about maximizing that budget, okay? Remember, you can spend, well, I found it in two places. You can spend $329, $330 a day. If you don't maximize that, again, you're gonna lose any of that potential budget. So, yes? Can you overspend? Like, hey, my keyword's awesome, and now I actually owe Google $4,000 because like, I went on fire? That, they'll be very, when they're handing out free money, they're very good about making sure that doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> good question. Okay, any other questions so far? All right, I want to start talking about the ad auction more specifically and, and relate this back to quality score. Here's our Google results page. I'm sure all of us have seen this a million times. And we're familiar with where our ads actually show on the page. What Eli was alluding to, which is a great point, is that, well, let me go back. When you look at a Google result page, the ads are situated at the top, and then they're situated along that right rail, okay? And there's a bit of a color change. It's very slight, maybe a slight yellow tint to it. And if you think about the, ad, the position of these or the rank of these, it just goes down the page. So... We start with one, two, three, 
and then four through 11 go down the side of the page. I wanna be in position one, right? So what impacts that is what we call ad rank. Google tells us that ad rank is a function of our bid price, which is all this is, and quality score. So we talked a little bit about quality score. What this tells me is if I want a really high ad rank, if I want a really high position, I either have to bid a lot of money, which we can't do, because we're limited to $2, or I have to have a really high quality score. All right? And remember the quality score comes down to basically uh, having things like really great click-through rate, and I'll talk about some of the other factors here. Any questions so far? No? Eli, we're good on time? Okay. Yes? That's my charger. You got it. Where is it? It's, uh, it's on the... We might be using it. Card. The little black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This one? Yeah. I can do everything. Oh, no, that's somebody else's. <laughs> no, the one, there's no cable in it. It's just the... I don't think I know which one it is. It's in the power bar. The black, uh, oh, I gotcha. Yeah. We got it. You are the best presenter ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest question of the night. Okay. All right. So let's just talk about a couple more keys to success. Uh, those, there's, there's a lot. We teach classes on this because there's so much involved here. Again, I don't want to overwhelm anybody, and I don't want to underwhelm anybody, but there's so many factors that are at play. That's why I really would focus on quality score, making sure my bids are high enough, and ranking really well. The other things we want to think about are keyword research, and again, improving that quality score. So, real briefly, let's talk about keywords. When we think about keywords, especially as nonprofits, there's so many advertisers bidding on all sorts of search queries. When we think about what's an important keyword to us, again, these are the ways that we attract somebody to our website. We want to make sure that it's relevant. Uh, is, it, is it actually relevant to what we do? Is there volume or is there actual impression volume? Are there people searching for this term? And is it competitive, meaning is it expensive? Remember, we have to kind of keep that in mind because we can only bid so high. So when we think about limitations, the point here is that, uh, and we've kind of talked about this theme a little bit, we're coming into the ad auction, or we're coming into the marketplace as someone that can only bid $2. All of our competitors can bid whatever they want, which means they can very easily show much higher in the, in the results set. So we have a number of different ways to kind of get back at this. We can look for things called long tail keywords, which is just really a fancy name for very specific uh, terms with very little search volume. Or we can look at basically keywords that indicate somebody is researching or looking for something very early on in their cycle. Okay? Whether they're looking for research on a particular topic or looking to, to get involved with your organization. Maybe Maybe they're not looking for things like donate now. Maybe they're looking for uh, more information about the overall topic of, of disaster relief or recovery and, and how they can get involved. So when I say what is long tail, whoops, excuse me. Here's a quick example that I stole. There's terms like shoes. When you, when you search for something like shoes, you can get all sorts of results that show up, right? Nothing very specific. It might not be, let's say I'm looking for, for uh, let's say I'm looking for men's basketball shoes, and I just type on shoes, that can, who knows what I can get, I can get a Wikipedia entry for that. But as I start to become more descriptive, as I start to, to increase the number of words in my keyword search, I become more descriptive, I get a much better result. Same thing works as when we're, when we're bidding on keywords. And so the long tail, is all of these 
terms that have a whole lot of, of actual words within them that are very descriptive and have very little actual volume because there's not many there's not as many people searching on these very specific terms but for us it's a really great way to uh, to actually benefit and be able to find new new subscribers or new donators and things like that and then when we think about research stage keywords if we look at this funnel, this is somebody looking to, to find our organization and donate to us. We want to find people that are looking for information or tips, uh, reviews, all these kinds of more, I guess, glossy or, or early stage terms that indicate somebody's not, they're not interested in making a donation right now, but they are interested in finding out more about what we do. Okay? Okay. I have another graphic for the keyword tool. We're going to move past it. All right. Last piece uh, that I wanted to touch on is that of quality score. Okay. We talked about this a bit. The whole concept with quality score, again, remember where our ads show. In order to show higher in the actual ranking, we have two factors at play. We have our actual max cost per click, or that's our bid price, and then we have our quality score, okay? Both of these contribute to how well we show in the ad auction. So if you think about it, and this is the visual that I was thinking that you were describing really well, Eli, a, essentially, as we have a higher quality score, we're going to pay a lower cost per click. Does that make sense? It's pretty easy, right? We don't have to bid as high to be as high in the rankings because our quality score is so good. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So what that means is in order to get a, uh, let's say our, we have an ad rank here. The lower we bid, I keep having to walk back here. The higher our quality score means the lower we have to bid, which basically means that our ad rank will be significantly higher. So these both, I just want to really highlight how these work together in order to enable you as nonprofits with a $2 maximum bid price to still remain competitive. Now, how do we make, how do we basically improve our quality score? Well, there's three things that contribute to it. The biggest one is click-through rate. The biggest thing is that people click on our ad and drive up that click volume. The other thing is relevancy, and this means how relevant is my advertisement to my keyword? How, uh, how, relevant is my, um, how relevant is my actual ad to my landing page? And then when we talk about the landing page itself, how, how much does this relate to the entire picture? If somebody searches on men's basketball shoes, am I sending them to a page for leather men's leather loafers? Or if somebody searches on hurricane disaster relief, am I sending them, you know, to an info page on, um, uh, on cancer treatment or something like that, okay? So all, all sorts of ways we can, we want to make sure that we are driving the right intention to the right place. Google rewards us with that. So just to show how this works, this is very easy math, shouldn't scare anybody off, but basically, The way this works is, uh, here's our ad rank. We want the highest ad rank possible, okay? So if you can see here, Dave has a dollar that he's willing to bid on his term. He has a quality score of eight. Bill bids a dollar. Joe bids the highest, but he's got a really poor quality score. So he actually shows last on the search results page. So my whole point here is that, as long as you have a really high quality score, you don't have to bid as high. Have I really have I beaten this one into the ground a lot enough? Is there a way to see who did get awesome quality scores? Is that just by going to Google main page and searching on your words and see who's number one? There's a way to see your quality score. Okay. And this is something that again we we preach a lot about is is really driving improvements in our quality score. So I can show those that are interested where you see that within AdWords itself. And again, it's just a, it's a matter of keeping on that and making sure that you know, you know how high or low you are. Yes, question? Um, 
it's possible to run through all these cards and if you do it, you recover from it, or is it kind of like you know, you're off and you're off? Uh, Yes and no. The question is, can you screw up your quality score? Google calculates quality score. I know this is a, this is a lot of information. Google cal calculates your quality score for every single keyword that you bid on, all the time. Every time that someone searches on it. So you start out. Uh, you're, you're constantly recalculating that quality score. I'd say that once you hit a pretty low level, it's a scale of one to ten. Once you get into the three or four range, which is low on the scale, it is hard to, to, to come back from that. Mainly because when you have a three or a four, it means that a lot of things are going bad. You know, you're, you're, no one's clicking on your ad, most likely. It's not a very relevant advertisement for what they're searching for. So Google's going to kind of continue to penalize you for that. Happy to talk about that more as well afterwards. So my last kind of points that I'll leave you with before before I talk about foundation search, is just, here's some key tips for making, for basically building a strong quality score. These are the things that Google will reward you for. Uh, small ad groups with a very well-themed group of keywords, okay? Each ad group should focus on one core element or one core theme. You need to make sure that these ads are pointing to a very highly relevant landing page. So if you're, telling, if you're showing an ad for people to donate to you know, Hurricane Relief, make sure you're going to a donation page for Hurricane Relief. And then maintaining consistency throughout. All of this stuff, all this really means is make sure that you are being relevant. It's not, it's not a system to be gamed, it's just more of a way to make sure that you, you're doing what you said, you're advertising what you said you're advertising for, and you're sending someone where you told them that you're gonna send them. That's all of it, okay? Okay, so that's my AdWords stuff. I know it's a lot. Any, oh yes, question. Great question. And you can answer it a couple ways. The question is if I have if I'm focused on two very different uh, particular you know, areas of my organization, so cancer outreach and hurricane relief. The reason that we structure different campaigns is because we can adjust things like time of day, we can adjust things like location at that level. So I would actually organize it and say, yep, I've got my cancer relief campaign and I've got my Cancer outreach and my hurricane relief campaign. Because then I can say, well, you know, I'm targeting hurricane relief to uh, to coastal cities, right? Where where it's more prevalent, or maybe I'm only targeting that to Canada, or I'm targeting that only to the US. And I'd want to make sure that I have that very well segmented. So that, that's what I would do. So when you're applying for the grant and you tell Google what your organization does, you would tell them as long as you as long as everything is pointing to the same domain meaning if you're if you offer both means of, of relief or, or donation uh, or information as long as you're not sending them to do two different sites you're okay I, I would think that you'd be okay they'll review it but you should be okay are there any other questions on AdWords stuff? Yes. I think most people would agree that um, organic search results are more trustworthy than paid search results. So I wonder if you could comment on that and talk about just how effective these AdWords campaigns really are. How many, how many of us? How many of us click? Let me show it again. How many of us click in these boxes? Never? Never? No, but this is the best one yet. But, when, when do you, do you mind if I pick it? When do you click on these boxes, in any of these ads? I don't even know. Well, I still have my research, my competitor, I do that. Okay. It's just convenient, it's always the first one. Yeah, the other thing to remember is 
not everyone is as nerdy as me. Like my mom, she's going to click the very first thing that comes off. You know, she doesn't know that, you know, there's this yellow teal thing. It's just like, I typed in and I click the first thing, why am I on the right page, right? So I think not everyone is as geeky as the people in this room. No <laughs> offense to people in this room. None taken. That, I, I agree with that. I would also say that what I, would, what I think is true is that these are advertisements and we know to trust, or those of us that like Google, I'm a very big fan of Google, once we get down into the organic listings, we know that these are well indexed, we know that Google understands the purpose of these sites. All of these are advertisers, and advertisers are trying to make money or trying to, well, you know, nonprofits obviously are trying to, to, uh, to benefit the organization. But there's a, there's a purpose here. People click on these ads when it is exactly what they're looking for, if, that's, if that makes sense. If it is, if I'm looking for those, you know, red men's Nike basketball shoes size 10 and a half or whatever it is, and that pops up as an ad and that takes me right to the buy page for that item, that's, that works for me. That's going to make sense to me. So what I would say is that high relevancy works really well. And that's why quality score rewards that type of situation. Because Google knows that people are less likely to click on advertisements for exactly all these reasons that, that none of us click on them as well. Yes? Is there any research on like, age demographics of people who click on ads? Like if some like, older people would or younger people would use ads, but is there any research on that? I'm sure there is. I don't, I am thinking of, I have some statistics on other types of online marketing, like things like remarketing, and how different age demographics are actually more prone to accept it than not accept it. Uh, I don't, I bet there is, but I don't know specifically off the top of my head if there's something you know, very, very direct to exactly that. Paid, paid search advertising links. Yes? Uh, you just commented on the targeting as uh, based on a device. You notice that it's no longer possible? It's no longer possible. So, the, no, great question. Uh, there's a lot of ability within AdWords to target times of day, day of the week, different locations. And up until very recently, Google allowed us to target by device specifically. You could say, only show to mobile devices, only show to tablets, only show to computers and desktops, same thing, uh, laptops and desktops. Now, basically within June and July, this has caused a massive uproar in the AdWords community, Google has taken the approach that we want to show our ads to all users across all devices all the time. Does anyone have any thought as to why they might want to do that? There's a, lot, there's a lot of reasons. I'm getting at the fact that maybe they're trying to drive more revenue by showing their ad. Yeah. yeah. They want to show your ad all the time. But yeah, but if you're open media, you'd love to put ads to a device that you think are only for TELUS users, because then you can do amazing stuff. And you used to be able to do that. You used to be able to target by, by mobile carrier, um, by browser type. Did uh, you target by location? Like, you know, you can. Or just coffee, like, well, my coffee shop is actually right here. You should come in. You can. I guess in terms of actual devices, Google took away the ability to target specifically by device. So what you can do is you can target everything but mobile devices, but now it's essentially you're targeting everything all the time. Yes? Did they replace it with the device preference? Or yes. Exactly. And there's a lot of information about that, the, the concept of enhanced campaigns. Happy to talk about that as well. That's a whole other. That's a whole other day. Okay, I want to give uh, a bit of a moment here to talk about Foundation Search. This is the organization that, that Ashley's from, and I only started to. We only started speaking a few days ago about Foundation Search. The reason I found this very compelling is that what they do, and, and she's here, so she can happily speak way more about this than, than I can. Uh, but essentially, it's a great way for nonprofits to, to identify potential donors, to analyze all the potential um, <laughs> donors where they can you know, really identify exactly who's most likely to fund you as an organization. And then you can 
I'd love to see more of this actually, but see how you're actually able to fund, uh, manage all your fundraising activities through the tool. So I have a bit more slides devoted to this, but as it is called Foundation Search, I'm assuming, I have not used this yet, but that you are able to, to go through their, their database and actually seek out all the different potential donors that you might be able to find uh, for your organization. Is that, yep. am I doing okay so yep. far? There was another point that you made to me the other day that had to do with the fact that there is a stipulation that a lot of organizations actually have to... The, yeah, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, one of the huge benefits with foundation funding is that uh, both in Canada and the U.S., uh, by tax laws, they have to give funding away, whereas corporations and governments don't. So that's a huge kind of niche that we're penetrating is that they're giving money away anyway, so as a nonprofit, it's just managing who to apply to, how much to ask for, yada, yada, yada. And that's where we come Which is perfect. So what I get from that is you're not hurting their feelings by asking them for money. They, they want to give that money away, they and, and they have to. So they made it very easy for you to find those folks that have to do that. And again, uh, there's a lot of functionality here. And I know Ashley can speak more to it, and I will let her, um, as we're all probably going to the Irish Heather after this, is that correct? <laughs> so I will leave you with uh, just my email address. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. I have a few cards as well, if anyone wants to take one, but please ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer it. If there's anything unclear, I will answer it. If anyone wants to know more about particular features or functionality or anything like that, just send me a note. Uh, I'm happy to respond. So, yes. So it seems like if I really went down this AdWords rabbit hole, I might not <laughs> actually ever do anything else. I'd be stuck with Mad Hatter and the Caterpillar and the Puka Ball. Um, is this something that Cardinal Path would help out like in terms of managing my grant? Or is it more kind of training me to do it better? We can do both. I wasn't going to sales pitch anybody today, but I. Just but in terms of what, well, what we do is, uh, you know, we have we do consultant work and we do training. So there's two ways to look at it. Whether you want to, um, whether you want to attend the training and, and exactly you know, figure out better ways to manage these types of accounts, or again, we do work with some with a a, a large handful of nonprofits as well for exactly that purpose. Yes. I have a question about like, how to show the results of plan. This uh, uh, in my uh, one of my job uh, with a small client, and I had a big problem with conversion, and it's pretty hard to tell them the results graph because uh, they don't really care about the product score, they don't care about the consumer rate. But the problem is to get in order to get a sell whatever without they want, that you have to go through a step, right? And then I really had a difficult time to actually communicate with them because uh, they just think that uh, oh. Uh, because they believe that uh, if you put ads on there and then connect it, you make know, money. <laughs> and it's pretty hard to, to, to tell them that that's not how it works, and you, you keep telling them that like, oh, you're trying to trick them, you know. There, there's a lot of ways, there was a lot of hoots and hollering about Google Analytics, but there's a lot of ways to show, first of all, we can run ads all day, and you know, ads can drive people to the site to perform some action. You can also use a tool like Google Analytics or any analytics suite to show that a lot of your a lot of your AdWords accounts can actually attribute to donations or, or revenue in other ways. People might see your ad and then come back to your site days later or weeks later and convert or donate or buy or whatever it is. And there's ways of showing that. There's a lot of ways to show. Uh, I, I agree with you. If it's not just how how much did I make, how much did I sell, how much did I has been donated. There's other metrics that I would key in on and show is really important to telling that story. Um, happy to talk through that as well. Any other questions? So I do think that's a really good point though, which is I've written lots of ads which got people to my page, but they were terrible conversion pages. And it's, it's I think often the hardest part, which is I can do the ad over here, but actually to get someone else's permission to change the terrible landing page and actually to get us converted to where we actually want to be. The, what I'm going to get to Eli, I didn't speak about it because I still went over time. It, a, a huge key of that is landing pages and it's making sure that they, just like you said Eli, um, 
getting someone to the page is half the story, but making sure that they can do what they need to do there is, is a huge component of that. Broadway here. It's exciting. Go enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, having... Allie's amazing. Thank you. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you.